कौन सा जो मैं अभी जाता हूँ रूममेट है ये आज जमा करके लो और ये मोबाइल जमा करो क्या स्पेस के लिए साइकिलो इसके अंदर ये 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 ये
Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, Yorks. Good afternoon, Simmer. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, Simmer, uh, how many classes have you attended in TOEFL? Just the last one, ma'am. And the one before this, that's it, no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, have you gone through the portion that you have missed out on? Yes, ma'am. I'm starting. I was looking at one lecture, the first lecture, and I will complete it the next one or two. Hmm. Days. Okay. So, do you think you will be able to um, cover all the lectures? Yes, ma'am. There are only eight lectures, I think. So, I think I'll be able to do that one. one hmm. I, like, I mean, like 10 days, I think. Okay. And if you have any doubts, then you may get in contact with uh, Manisha or um, Surjit ma'am. And uh, the, you can request for a doubt lecture if required. Yes, right. Yorks, have you been able to do any work, any practice? Ma'am, I was asking about that mock tests. Hmm, hmm. So, ma'am, can we get mock tests? Practice mock tests? Uh, we can get practice mock tests. Number one, have you registered for TOEFL? Not yet, ma'am. Okay, when you register for TOEFL, you will be getting two uh, practice mock tests. One will be, I think, free. Second one, you can, um, I think it's paid. Uh, you can get those, and those can will be evaluated by ETS. Right. Other than that, if you want to um, do mock tests and if you have enough time, then you can request UT um, to uh, give you the mock, uh, the extra mock test also. Right. 
Okay. So you can um, give a request to Manisha or Sujit, ma'am, that you want to take some mock tests. Okay. So the mock test, so the TOEFL mock test will be on an individual basis. So you have to inform from before so that there will be somebody who will be coordinating the test for you. Okay. Okay. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, Celeb. Uh, I had a question for you. Uh, can we yes. take the mock test more than once? I mean, if it's on a person-to-person basis. -person yeah, you uh, you can take more than one mock test. Only you have to be uh, you have to inform beforehand so that it can the time slot can be arranged for you. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Could, could I get a permission to keep my video off for uh, this like lecture because I have power outage here? You have power outage. Okay. So it's going to be hard on my data. Okay. I think both of it. So you've joined through mobile. Well, I have joined to the laptop, but I am using okay. mobile hotspot. Okay, fine. Good afternoon, Akshita. Good afternoon. Thank you for practicing. Thank you. I've uh, given you the feedback. I hope that helps. Yes, ma'am. Right? Um, I wanted sure. to ask that yeah. if the word limit goes beyond the uh, 250 day cut points. Uh, not really, but they would prefer if it was short. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and one more thing, the sample that I showed you that day. Uh, yeah, I that was a little beyond the word limit that was above 300. So we would not uh, try to keep it within 300 at least. Yes, ma'am. Even if you can't do, uh, can't keep it within 250, at least not beyond 300. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, okay, I'll just wait for a few more to come in. So, oh. <clears throat> yes, good afternoon, Ayan. Good afternoon, Varshini. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ayan, you haven't practiced anything? Uh, no, ma'am. Actually, I was uh, I was out there to like I had a class yesterday. The entire like mm -hmm. I had two classes yesterday. So I couldn't do it yesterday and day before. I had one and out um, you haven't practiced any of the speaking tasks. I couldn't practice the I couldn't practice the writing, but I did a few mm -hmm. speaking. I have a few recorded. I'll send it to you after the okay, class. Okay, please please do. Good afternoon, Tanush. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Simar, Varshini, Tanush, Ayan, everyone can please come on with your videos. No, actually, I'm having some problems. I'll turn it on in a bit. Is that okay? What internet do you people use? Everyone has problems. Ma'am, actually, the there's rain, it's raining over here, and also the, my Wi Fi keeps turning on and off. I'm connected to my mobile. Where, where are you? I'm Sanpada. Sanpada. It's raining in Sanpada. Ma'am, it was raining. It's it raining and raining. stopping. It's very... So the uh, connection is very unstable. That's why. That's why I think Geo broadband is the is quite good. At least it doesn't give so much a problem. Okay. So, Tanush, where are you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Have you been able to practice any? Uh, yes, ma'am. I haven't received anything from you so far. Hmm? Unless you practice, you won't know whether you are doing it right or not. Yes, okay, I'll do one thing. Varshini, do you mind if I share uh, your essay and discuss it? Sure, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, what I mean to say that unless you do something, you won't 
find where you are going wrong. So this is the one essay and I'm happy that some of you have been able to practice. So can you see the screen? Right, can you see the PDF everybody? Yes ma'am. Okay. So if you look at this essay, this is an integrated task. This was about the first question that is uh, Chevalier's memoir, right? Now the, your introduction must include the lecture and the um, reading. Now here, the first sentence is, according to the lecture, critics doubted. Now that is a grave mistake done. It is not according to the lecture, it is according to the author. Such mistakes are not permitted, right? Uh, critics doubted the accuracy of the memoir of Chevalier about his life. Now, about his life is not required. Memoir is more than enough. Now, the most important sentence in the introduction here is missing. Right? What should be there? Varshini, can you tell me what should be included here? Part how the uh, lecturer disagrees with yeah so what the lecturer stance on the topic has to be mentioned in the introduction if it is missing uh, you are not you are going to lose points right so follow the format that TOEFL wants you to follow so the templates that we spoke about are actually templates that TOEFL has given in its guide right so the lecturer disagrees or counters the argument. Uh, that is in the question itself, it is like, how does the lecturer, what was it? So it, it said, how does uh, explain, summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they respond to the specific points made in the reading passage. So in the introduction itself, it should be clear whether the lecturer agrees or disagrees, right? So that should be there. And coming to the details. Now, another thing, one very important thing that all those who have been writing, I've found this, um, the focus should always be on the lecture, right? So the, when you're talking about the details, uh, keep the details from the uh, passage as short as possible. Just get the main point. Every detail from the passage is not required, right? And when uh, and this was good. Uh, the it, uh, critics believe now here when you um, are talking about the passage, you have to see what is it. Uh, is it talking about a specific? group or a or somebody specific about so the author is discussing what the critics have said or maybe in the like in the last um, in the one about the AIDS drugs uh, it's not that the author is giving suggestions but the suggestions were made by a certain group so that specific uh, term should be there right okay now um, you have to keep an eye on the number of words so how do we do that remember that if you are writing in um, say uh, arial uh, 11 so about five to six lines you can fit in so not more than that right uh, if you go beyond you know that uh, if you go beyond say two lines for, or two and a half lines for the passage and more than four lines for the lecture then for each of the paragraphs, then you know you will be going beyond the word limit, right? So here, if you, if you see, the critics believe that Chevalier invented many events to make his life seem interesting. So this is absolutely not required. Chevalier invented many events uh, should not be put in. You just get to the main point that uh, critics believe uh, that Chevalier's claims to have been very wealthy is um, is wrong because he or uh, uh, Chevalier uh, said the critics dispute the claim that Chevalier's uh, claim to have been very wealthy yet he borrowed huge sums of money or because he borrowed huge sums of money yeah 
However, the lecturer argues, the lecturer argues that Shevela had most of his wealth in the form of property. So this is absolutely okay. And yeah, don't go into contractions. Write the full word, must have borrowed. Yeah. So this is a formal writing. We would not prefer contractions where we, we could write. So it's is okay instead of it is. But must apostrophe ve should be avoided. Okay, now when you say secondly, this is okay. Now, apart from keeping it for a long time, wherever possible, use terms which can make your sentence concise, right? And anything uh, used it. Another thing is that when you are refer you are you are using a um, pronoun, make sure you have mentioned what the pronoun is, or it is clear from the sentence what the pronoun is talking about. Apart from keeping it, what is the it, right? Now, both places, if you say it, then it becomes a little ambiguous, yeah? And any other important point, if possible, you should add. That depends upon whether you've taken the notes properly or not. Now, this uh, uh, response was for 242 words, absolutely fine. Uh, only problem was a little bit of sentence structure here and there. Otherwise, this is what we would expect. And yes, of course, the introduction should be clear. A complete introduction is required, right? Uh, Varshini, quite well done at the first attempt. And uh, please do the others and send it to me. And yeah. this is for everyone. Please. Um, Please write your essays so that you get to know what mistakes you are making and you can improve on it. Yeah. Not that you will get the same question again, but at least you know that this is what is required and you are writing properly. Okay. So, uh, first, uh, when you write the first essay, you learn from your mistakes, you don't make the same mistakes again. Okay. Everyone clear? Okay. So today we will be moving on to the independent task. So anybody else, anybody with any doubts for the indicated task so far? Hmm? Simmer, did you follow the indicated task last time? Yes, ma'am. Okay, please try writing so you don't have a backlog. So if you start writing at the last moment, then it becomes a little bit of a problem. You don't have the scope of improving. Okay, so... Okay, now, in the independent task, you will be getting a particular question. And it will be just a topic like your independent uh, speaking task. More or less similar topics will be there. Only thing is that you have to write and it has to be longer than the, uh, and the matter has to be more than in the speaking task. So when you're talking about the independent writing task, here is where your opinion can come in. So, so far in the, in the integrated task, your opinion was not required. Yeah, here uh, you just will be given a question, a topic, and you'll be writing from your experience and using your own knowledge. Uh, this task will be uh, 30 minutes. So plan, thinking, planning, writing will be 30 minutes. So more or less, if we talk about planning about five minutes, you will get uh, and keeping about three minutes to edit it out. Remember, you should always edit your writing tasks. Don't leave, just leave it be. Like you should always have three minutes at the end so that you can take care of the mistakes like especially in punctuations. Uh, I've seen um, essays where 
you put an apostrophe in the wrong place or not used an apostrophe, got a spelling wrong, which could be absolutely avoided. Here you will get 30 minutes. Again, there is no editing tool available to you. There is no spell check available to you. So you have to do it yourself. <clears throat> and here at least 300 words. Now in the integrated task, as, as I said, don't go beyond 250 to 300. So try to keep it to 250. If it goes to 300, try to make it a little concise. Here you have to write at least 300 words, not less than that. So you have to expand enough so that um, it gets to 300 and more, yeah? And the 30 minute timer will start um, after the question is displayed to you. So they will be reading out the question, the, you will be able to see the question and the timer will start. Uh, you have to keep an eye on the timer, right? So when we talk about what the task is, a question on a particular topic or issue, you have to write an essay that states, explains, and supports your opinion. So if given a particular topic, you have to give your reasons and support them with the help of examples. That's what they will expect from you. Uh, so they could be something like this. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? So a statement will be given to you and then use reasons and specific supports to support your answer, yeah? So the reasons and specific details that they are asking for is very important. That's how you would be expanding your essay. We'll go into the details. Uh, like for example, if you have this type of question, some people believe a particular issue, other people believe why, which of these two positions do you prefer or agree with? give reasons and specific details. So that is more or less a general format of the question you will get. So you have to read the question carefully. You have to see what is it asking you and answer accordingly, right? So if you, uh, the mostly, basically three types of questions that may come, either agree or disagree, which is most common, uh, here you will be uh, given two sides of an argument. Um, the opinion of people may be is given to you, whether you agree to it or not, or a statement is given to you, whether you agree or disagree, give your reasons and examples. So uh, you first state, uh, you have to be very clear on which side to pick. You can't write on both of them. So you can't say, I agree to some extent and disagree to some extent, no. Pick one stance and just keep to it and you will uh, and support your opinion accordingly <clears throat> now there could be also something like explaining both sides right so here it would be uh, usually the advantages and disadvantages uh, these we did in the speaking section also so when you ask about advantages and disadvantages you have to be able to state both of them here you cannot pick any one side unless that's, they ask you talk about the advantages. Yeah. So they may give you an issue and say that there are advantages and disadvantages to this. And you have to speak on the advantages of this X say. So in that case, you will focus on the advantages and you'll write a little bit on the disadvantages. But mostly, uh, if it says if you if it says and then you talk about both sides so maybe one paragraph one body paragraph is about the advantages second body paragraph is about the disadvantages and if you have pick a stance from many options as a preference question so so in the preference question you pick up one stance and compare to the others, right? So that is basically the types of questions you will get. 
Now coming to the scoring criteria, again, you have a scoring uh, range of zero to five, maximum is five. And the combined scores of the independent and integrated both will be taken, which will go into a, a scale of 30. So now when we are, as uh, we spoke about the in integrated one here also, uh, the criteria that the raters are looking at is development of ideas, organization, and language use, right? So when you are talking about it, uh, what will you see? How well you address the topic? Yeah, that is development. Develop and support your ideas. So if you just give an idea and um, give a very vague sketch of uh, the topic, then that does, that won't work. Organization is important. That is not only organization of your paragraphs, but also of your ideas and sentence structure, right? Language, grammar, sorry, grammar, vocabulary, and writing conventions, everything counts. You can't write uh, a sentence with wrong grammar. Spelling, punctuation. And yes, capitalization. When you are writing, uh, say there are instances when uh, students forget to capitalize the sentences. So they're beginning a sentence with a small, uh, the lower case, which will be very noticeable. Yeah. So you have to keep an eye on your spelling, punctuation, and using capital letters, especially when you're writing names. This applies to even in your uh, integrated task. If there are specific names given, if there are specific terms given which require, which are proper nouns, use capital letters, don't forget, right? So this is the general idea of what it is about. If you look at the rubrics, um, scoring rubrics, say a score of five, when we, uh, similar to the integrated task, Effectively, now here it is not only uh, here it is not about using the information correctly. Here it is about addressing the topic and task. Yeah, whether you are able to develop it properly, it is well organized. So well organized is what gets you to five. Effectively addresses. Yeah, if you look at four, it just says addresses the topic and task well, but not effectively. Yeah, so it should be impressive enough. It should be strong enough. Displays a strong and cons consistent language skills with minimal errors, right? Now, if you look at four, addresses the topic uh, uh, and task well, though some points may not be fully elaborated. Generally well-organized. Here it said well-organized and developed, right? Generally well organized and well developed, occasional noticeable minor errors. So, if there are minor errors which they can say, okay, one or two errors here and there which can be overlooked, fine. Noticeable minor errors in structure, word form, idiomatic language, but they do not interfere, but they are like maybe every paragraph there are one or two errors, which will be quite noticeable. Now, if we don't really want a three, but you should know what will get, what will lead to a score of three. Addresses the topic and task using somewhat developed explanations. So it is not well developed. Explain, exemplifications or other details. So the examples also are not proper, maybe very general. May demonstrate inconsistent facility in sentence formation word choice and word choice that may result in lack of clarity, occasional obscure meaning, right? So this is what we do not want. We will be aiming for five. If not five, at least it should get you a four. Remember, four in each of the tasks means eight in total. That will uh, be only 25 on the scale score. So you have to get above four at least in one of them, right? So integrated one, getting four, uh, getting a five is easier because you just have to keep uh, track of the information 
organize, you know how to organize as a fixed organization of the task, of the writing task. And it is easier to get five if you have all your uh, points given, etc. In the uh, independent task, getting a four is easy. Getting a five is a little difficult, but not impossible. There have been students who've got five in the independent task also. So all you have to do is keep your um, keep your essay well organized. Number one, minimal errors. You should have a hold on your language. No repetitions. Like if you're just keep, if you keep repeating uh, ideas or sentence structures, it doesn't read. It doesn't uh, seem to be good enough. And Development of your topic, that is your ideas, how you put it down, you including um, examples and reasons. You should have a clear idea of what you are writing. Okay. Okay. Now we come to what the task is asking you to do. You pick up a side on a given issue, defend your choice. That is what you are going to do. Right. So you give your own uh, own thoughts and ideas on the issue. Explain your position. This is what is important. This is what they want you to do. Explain your position. So you state your opinion. That is very important. A clear opinion. Give evidence. Examples. Right? And consistency is required, of course. So three things that are required. Opinion, evidence, examples. Every paragraph should have your evidence with examples. Yeah. So if you give your evidence, explain clearly, use examples to support that explanation, you will have expanded enough. And this, and yes, this is something they even state in the question do not use memorized examples. So, how do you avoid memorized examples? Now, by memorized examples, they don't mean that you cannot use your, uh, you have memorized some example which uh, you have from personal experience, that of course you can use. But if it is memorized, you have read something somewhere, a general example is given and maybe they find uh, more than five people using the same example, means it has been, you have read it from somewhere and used it, avoid that. So how do you avoid that? Use examples from personal experience. When you use examples from personal experience, you are most likely uh, that it hasn't been used by somebody else and it is original. Now, yeah. so when they say use specific reasons and examples to support your answer, the reason should be there, examples should be there. Yeah, and use your own words as far as possible. So now coming to how to approach it. Okay. Now in the first paragraph itself, your position should be clear. We will do a particular um, question. First, we need to know how to go about it. So in the first paragraph, opinion should be clear. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And each now uh, more uh, more or less you'll have a four body para four paragraph structure. First paragraph will be your introduction, which introduces the question and your opinion. That is what stance you are taking, which is known as the thesis statement. Second paragraph will be devoting uh, will be devoted to your first point, and sec third paragraph will be devoted to your third point which will be followed by a very short conclusion. So that's your structure mainly. So, and so each paragraph should be devoted to making one main point. Now, when you are talking about, say, you agree or disagree about um, taking up an additional subject for uh, your uh, major, uh, additional subject while you are doing your major. So, uh, you are going to first paraphrase the question, give your opinion that it should be or not, and then you have to have two points in mind. So in your introduction itself, first thing you say is after your opinion, uh, I, believe, I believe this way, 
for two reasons. So you know you have two reasons. So your two point two reasons should be clear. They should not overlap. Yeah. So each you uh, if you talk about two body paragraphs, they should have one main point each, specific reasons, one or two examples to support the reasons. Yeah. So what is required is you are connecting the examples to the abstract idea. So if you give a reason, it may be an abstract idea. You're supporting it with the help of examples. So explaining that abstract idea with the help of... Now, and examples should be, as I said, from personal experience. Or if you can't get examples from personal experience, you can go into uh, examples from other people's lives, but connect it to your idea. That is important. Yeah. And of course, keep to uh, 300 words and longer. So not less than 300 words. And one thing you must remember is that if they have abstract ideas, you can take any side. There is no right or wrong answer. What they are judging you for is how strongly you can support your uh, stance, how well you have developed your reasons, how good your uh, connect, uh, how well you connect your ideas. That is what is important. Okay. So supporting your argument as clearly as possible is important. And yes, this is something. Every sentence you write should be relevant and related to your thesis. So when you are writing, after writing, you just read it to yourself and see what if you have written something, is it relevant or it can be avoided? Right? If you can delete the particular sentence from your essay, it still is good enough, then maybe that particular point is not required or particular sentence is not required. Okay. Now, for every essay, for the essays, as I said, organization is important. Uh, Ma'am, sorry to disturb you. Uh, everyone has put off the camera. Please, I request all to put on the camera. Yeah, some of them have. Varshini, why every time I have to tell you to put on the camera? Every time you have the data problem? Uh, Ma'am, my camera was on like two minutes ago. Yeah, do, every time uh, I have noticed that. Don't put off your cameras. You don't need to fidget with your cameras as such. Or you can just keep yourself muted so that any surrounding disturbance doesn't come in. Ayan is there or he has gone somewhere else? No, ma'am, I'm here. Then why your camera is off? Ma'am, I told, I informed ma'am that I'm having some problems. Sorry, ma'am, you can continue it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so when we are talking about the structure of your essay, uh, it requires, say, four or five paragraphs. Now, in 30 minutes, or say, not even 30 minutes, your write, actual writing time will be around 20 to 25 minutes. So in 20 to 25 minutes, how much can you write? Maximum four paragraphs. So. Uh, if you if you think that you can organize your ideas well and can write three points, then go into three paragraphs. Otherwise, two body paragraphs for two points is enough. And one introduction, one conclusion. That's what you require, right? So when we talk about the introduction, what goes into the introduction? A general background information, if you have some idea about a general idea about the topic that has been asked. Uh, say so you can begin with a broad statement, which we call a hook, which makes it interesting. Then you get to the specific topic, that is, you introduce the main issue or idea. How do you do that? You will be rephrasing the prompt or the question that is given to you in your own words. Yeah? And next comes your opinion. So basically, you have three sentences in your introduction. Number one will be a general statement, if it is possible. If you can't think of a general statement, doesn't matter. 
just rephrase the uh, question given to you and go on to your opinion right but this opinion is very important this should not be missing a clear opinion and when you state your opinion you will also say how many points you are discussing in your essay so if you uh, if you are sure about like uh, a very good essay uh, a strong essay would actually even state the two points in about a couple of words each in the introduction if you cannot do that it's okay you have to just say that i i this i will be discussing my um, point of view with the help of two points in this essay right then if you talk about a template for the introduction you can say there is a great debate about this is what tofel has given an example of or it is said that and then but you can move on to your uh, to the two sides of the uh, given topic i feel this, this way for two reasons which i will explore in the following essay so this is so here you are giving your opinion adding your opinion here but i do not agree to the statement or if you think you agree i absolutely agree to the statement so the statement you have already mentioned so this is the you need one two three sentences in your introduction not more than that yeah too much of details is not required okay now coming to the body uh like we talked about the body paragraphs in the integrated you need a transition statement a topic statement a supporting sentence right so uh, uh, it begins with a transition statement that is uh, firstly i believe that or you just give, put your point forward that is, then you expand with a topic statement supporting sentences will include explanation and examples right these three things have to be there so if you talk about one sentence for the transition one sentence for the topic two sentences say for the explanation plus three sentences two sentences for the example then about uh, say about six to seven sentences maximum not more than that now when you come to the body paragraph your structure will be introducing your first key point right state your first reason say you can say to begin with or firstly then you explain the reason in one or two sentences give information for the reason as i explained earlier give a concrete example or detail right and transition sentence which, uh, this will include when you are talking about a detail or transition sentence that shows a personal example so my own experience is a compelling example of this or in my experience you can use so it should show that you are talking about your ex own experience or if it is not from your experience then for example right or an example of this is then you elaborate uh, on your point and offer so this is your specific example that you gave four or five sentences will be sufficient and which will include four of i won't say four or five sentences maybe four or five lines or two or three sentences could be good enough so the example from your life would be important you can add a second example with detail if you want to which is absolutely optional not required and lastly explain how these examples support your opinion so you are actually uh, getting back uh, connecting it back to your reason or point that you have taken up for the particular paragraph right so this is how you will be structuring your body paragraph so body paragraph 1 body paragraph 2 will again be a new point new examples structure remains the same so you begin with a point 
expand on the point, go on to providing examples, explain the examples, and then lastly, explain the effect or consequence of the example. So this shows that, or this was, uh, so the consequence that maybe uh, you were talking about reducing weight and the exercising. So as a result of exercise, I was able to reduce say three kg of weight in a month's time, or I was get, able to get back in shape in four months. So the consequence should be mentioned, right? So you are, you are actually connecting it back to the point that you made in your first uh, sentence, okay? Now coming to the paragraph three, which is your body paragraph two. State your reason again. So the second reason, so you begin with secondly or furthermore, any transition word which shows that this is your second point. Then again, you will be explaining the reason, providing a concrete example. Now here, don't use the same format as you introduced uh, your example in the first paragraph. Use a slightly different format to in introduce your example or my personal history is proof, for, proof of, or in my experience, this happened, but it should be a little different. So the second example detail, explain why second example supports your opinion, right? And always, this is important, always clarify how your example supports your stance, whether you agree or disagree, and how they relate back to the issues stated in the prompt, right? So. Each point means you are supporting your opinion and your opinion is whether you agree or disagree. So your last sentence should relate back to your point which is supporting your prompt. Yeah. Now paragraph four could be uh, just a conclusion which would be restating your thesis statement. Uh, so in you can start with in conclusion i believe that and just restate your opinion right uh, and along with that just give a brief summary of your main ideas so in the now after you have written the essay you are very clear about what the main ideas were so you don't have to write an in the entire sent first sentences of your paragraphs just the key words of the main ideas. That's it, right? So you can say this is because reason, you can give the reason one and the reason two that you have used in your essay, right? And this is optional. If you want to extend body paragraph four a little bit, you can give the opposite uh, opinion and say that how you do not agree to that, right? But that is optional. If you have time, usually you don't have enough time, uh, so you can leave it out. And you can end with a real world result of your argument. So as we said, each, so a concluding fact, uh, as we used in each of the body paragraphs, Conclusion should can also have a concluding fact, right? So anyone wants to take down anything from here? Don't worry, I'll share the PPT. So you will have your points whenever you want to refer to it. But it would be good to write down, so which will help you to uh, answer the questions as we work on them. Okay? So mainly, your for reason, explanation of the reason, example, supporting statement to end the paragraph. Conclusion, just restating the, you, using a transition, then restating your stance and the main point. And do not use the same words that you have used in the introduction. Paraphrase it and put it in different words, right? So if you if you look at a template somehow, so it could your structure could be something like this. 
uh, maybe we begin with there is no sh shortage of opinion on you paraphrase the question that is the topic in my opinion then you write your opinion that's your stance that is whether you agree to this or not and you actually write it i uh, in my opinion say if you're talking about taking up a second language second subject that in my opinion uh, every student should take up a second uh, subject uh, along with the major right then i feel this way for two main reasons which i will explore in the following paragraphs so this sentence you can mug up or you can use a different variation of it but two main reasons should be there if you are good enough then maybe you can leave a little space over here and actually put in the reasons after you have written your essay but that becomes a little dicey if you don't have time enough uh, so you can just write this and if you want to edit it you can edit it later on so this was your introduction right now coming to the first body paragraph first of all so you put down your first reason one or two three uh, one to two sentences about further explaining your first reason yeah now after explaining you need example my personal experience is a good example of this yeah and then you put in your example to support then last and then you go on to as a result effect of your personal example can come in to explain your point and then for this reason you come to your concluding sentence that connects your personal example back to your stance so now this as a result one if you can put in good enough if you can't then you just explain the examples and how uh, it actually affected you yeah and this for this reason and the concluding sentence should be there so the concluding sentence of each paragraph actually sums up the paragraph as such right so you're closing like uh, when you're talking about an essay you are closing the essay with a conclusion you are closing the, a paragraph with a concluding statement then you go on to a transition secondly or furthermore or more moreover whatever is comfortable to you here is your second reason right again one to three sentences of explaining then drawing from my own experience now here you are talking about your examples from your experience my personal exp example uh, experience is a good example of this we are not going to repeat the same line rather drawing from my own experience now another thing uh, i've seen uh, students writing from my own personal experience would that be correct hmm? no when you say own experience it means personal either you use own or you use personal not both of them together right so here we use personal here we used own experience again you expand this and show how it supports your reason moreover any additional detail of your personal example if you want to add then it's certainly clear to see why so now here you said for this reason here you don't say for this reason again it is it's certainly clear to see why can be used or this shows that yeah and a concluding sentence to connect to the topic here's your two body paragraphs done now coming to your conclusion in conclusion you just restate the stance on the topic do not use the same words as the introduction use a different uh, different uh, form of it this is because now here what you do is restate the two reasons of your opinion yeah just the keywords so maybe in the first sentence first uh, paragraph uh, if i take the example of taking up a 
um, second subject. So first uh, reason would be like uh, how it helps. Maybe you can gain extra knowledge and uh, extra sub. Say if I take up computer science, taking a math, advanced maths along with computer science, if you're giving the example, uh, would how would it help? It will help in strengthening uh, my, um, strengthening my uh, say programming languages. So you can write that over here just helps in strengthening knowledge about the main subject. And in the second example, second sentence, or se sorry, second paragraph, whatever point you have taken up, summarize it in three words and put it down. So this is what your essay will look like, right? And you should follow a structure to the T. Now, it's not that you will be writing the same uh, exactly, each of you will be using the, exactly the same transitions. It's up to you, different transitions you can use. But remember, when you are practicing, you use a set of transitions which you get used to. So you don't have to think of what to write. So how to begin your essay, how to begin your first uh, paragraph, how to begin your second paragraph, so you know that in your first body paragraph, you will write first of all. In your second body paragraph, you will write secondly or moreover or furthermore. So if you're writing furthermore, just stick to furthermore, right? So if you're, if you're practicing with four essays, all four essays should have the same uh, template. So you know that, okay, now how to introduce my example? So you don't have to waste, you won't be wasting time in thinking about how to introduce. You know the exact words that will go in and all you have to do is connect it to the example properly. If you can't connect it, then use a separate sentence completely. My personal example is a good example. Uh, personal experience is a good example of this, full stop. Right? So this is clear a specific template can be used. Now let's move to a question. Okay, now one thing we haven't um, done is planning. So we will plan using a specific question. Uh, here we say, uh, some people say that advertising encourages us to buy things that we really do not need. Others say that advert advertisements tell us about new products that may improve our lives. Which viewpoint do you agree with? Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. So when you have a question, first thing you do is break down the question. So what are the keywords in this question? What are the two sides? So there are two viewpoints. We, we have to pick out pick up one viewpoint to discuss, right? So some people say advertising encourages us to buy things that we really do not need. Others say advertisement tell, tells us about new products improve our lives. So these are the two things. Number one, they encourage us to buy things which we don't need. Number two, tells us about new products that may improve our life. So knowledge about new products. And the first one, if I paraphrase, it could be impulsive buying, right? So these are the two uh, sides of the story. You have to pick up one side, think about points, yeah? So how do you do that? Now remember, for every essay, we, what do we require? We require an introduction. So introduction will be paraphrasing the question, right? Advertisements have various purposes. They may uh, help, uh, they may help us to improve, uh, to, uh, they may give us knowledge about new products and improve our lives, yeah? Instead of tell us, you can talk, say knowledge. And the other side is that they, uh, they 
implore us to buy things which are not required. Always paraphrase. Don't use the exact words throughout as given in the in the question. Some uh, phrases or some terms you may repeat, but more or less just paraphrase it. And then you go on to your viewpoint, your opinion. Yeah. So introduction is paraphrase plus opinion. So uh, I believe that, right? Mm, say maybe any one of them, whatever your opinion is, you put in that. Now, when you come to your body paragraphs, what are you going to do? What is the reason for the, say you think of two, first reason, second reason. Say if you are thinking that they tell us about new products that may improve our lives. Right. So you should think for if you can't think of reasons, at least think of examples. Examples will lead you to reasons. So personal examples, uh, say you uh, maybe you are looking at advertisements or a particular advertisement help you to buy a particular product. Why? So you begin with the why, go on to that will give you the reason, then go on to explain the example and how it helped you, right? So you begin with the why, you th may think of an example first, think of the why, and then go into how, okay? Similarly, you think of a second example, again, now second example should not be something very similar to the first. You have to think of something where you can talk about a new point. So the why should be different over here. Yeah. And the example will give you the how. So this is what your idea when you are planning, this is what you have to do. Right. You can write it, write this down. So first point, second point, and this is your introduction. Right. So in about three minutes, you have to think, write down your example. You write just write down the keywords of the example, a keyword of the reason, keyword of how. And then you start while you are writing, you are obviously thinking of new uh, ways of expanding your points, or maybe you come up with a new idea while you are writing, you can use that. But to begin with, you should have two points ready so that you can expand on them. Okay. Okay, so now I'll just show you an example to get an idea of how to expand. Like uh, now we have been writing essays in school. You must have written similar essays, but we should know what TOEFL is ex what is a format that will give get you a good score for TOEFL? Let's look at this. Now we have this question. Yeah, the two sides of the question. One is encourages us to buy things we don't need. Other is tell us tells us about new products that may improve our lives. Now, some people believe that advertisements lure us to purchase goods that are not of necessity. Others are of the view that advertising has a positive role to play in modern society, helping us choose between competing goods. So this is restatement of the question, right? So you can improvise on the question, restate it, not using the exact same words, but adding a little bit to it, keeping the meaning intact. And then you go into your opinion. In my opinion, I strongly believe that advertising encourages consumers to buy unwanted items for three compelling reasons. Now, this student has three compelling reasons. Right? You can use the word compelling reasons very well enough. Okay? So, what uh, is it clear what we got in the Introduction, rephrasing the question, putting in both the sides, then coming to your opinion, stating clearly what 
your opinion is which side you are um, supporting and just saying how many reasons. Got it? Yaksh, are you following? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, our first body paragraph. So, what are we going to, what is required in the first body paragraph? Chinmay? What is required in your first body paragraph? Remember the, uh, you, what you wrote down? Did you write down the points while we were discussing? Body paragraph one. What is the first thing is re required? A reason. That is a topic sentence. Right? After reason, Mm, Chinmay, you are not audible. Sorry, Chinmay. Okay, Manya, after the topic sentence, what is required? Yes, ma'am. I did not hear the question. Uh, I was talking about the structure of your first body paragraph after the introduction. So in the first body paragraph, uh, you will be introducing your first point. Yes, yeah? ma'am. What is required after you've introduced the first point? Ma'am, we will give example. Examples. Reason. And then you will explain the examples. Yes. Right? So let's see whether we have it here. To begin with, that is your transition. Advertising creates unrealistic expectations about products with exaggerated and misleading claims. So your key word is unrealistic expectations, yeah, with exaggerated and misleading claims. And then example, now when you say for instance, means you are introducing an example. For instance, advertisements for prescription drugs create unrealistic expectations about effectiveness of the drugs and its side effects. In these kinds of advertisements, the visual images only show healthy, happy people. It never truly shows the actual downside effect of drugs. So what is this doing? They've used an example, explained the point with the help of example, right? Similarly, beauty and health products. So this was about drugs and its side effects. Similarly, beauty and health products may not live up to their promises, resulting in wasted consumer dollars. So a second example about beauty and health products. You don't need to expand too much. You've already explained. And what uh, a specific point related to that particular example given. Yeah. Now we have to wrap up our paragraph. Disclaimers are often hidden in small print on product packaging and in out of the way spots in ads. So what are you doing? You are actually going back to mis the misleading, exaggerated and misleading claims, right? Why are they misleading? Because they are, uh, the all these uh, disclaimers are in small print. So it reiterates the point that, now you don't have to repeat what you have said in the first sentence. You just have to put in a sentence which supports that claim. So this is what the second first body paragraph was like. Now coming to the second body paragraph. Secondly, multinational corporations create meticulously crafted ads to entice consumers to purchase their products. So first one was about misleading. Second is in meticulously crafted ads to entice consumers. For instance, yeah, did they use for instance in the previous one also? Okay. Now, this is what I would not recommend using the same uh, phrase for both sentence, both paragraphs. So, instead of for instance, we can use some other, uh, other phrase. Say, uh, you can say, for example, an example is of fast food chain McDonald's. That could be better. Adver now, here, using specific examples, remember, you can use examples from real life and even refer to uh, specific companies or specific products, which is not wrong. 
So, for example, fast food chain McDonald's advertising artifacts try to lure children. Now, the your uh, point was about uh, uh, entice consumers to purchase the products. So, we are talking about how lure children with toys and playrooms in order to sell kids' meal. I think everyone can relate to this. Moreover, Vigorous advertising campaigns are promoted across a plethora of channels such as TV, billboards, online. So you're talking about advertisement, you're expanding your point. So on to grab consumer attention to purchase goods that may be of no need to them. So here what do we do? We are actually supporting our claim that these, are, they, these products are not required. Consequently, people become. So here we are then last sentence of the paragraph, summing up giving with consequently people become more materialistic at advertising compounds to their desire to own more items. Right? So we had our first sentence of introducing the point. Second, the example explaining with the help of examples with the expanding so how do you expand you can actually use the example to expand on your point and that brings in clarity also and then going going on to expanding how advertisements are put forward and they do not and how they uh, affect consumer decision and then you go on to wrapping up the point now, what is left? Your conclusion. Yeah. Lastly, people cannot just choose to ignore advertisement because advertisers use many underhand methods. Now, if you hear, see here, uh, this is the format of the conclusion, con the last paragraph having a point plus conclusion. Right. So there is a point here. Oh, there's, I think there was another conclusion. Okay. Uh, okay, now here in the introduction, the student talked about three points. So this is the third point. So lastly, people can also, it's not point plus conclusion. Sorry about that. So this is your point number three. Lastly, people cannot just choose to ignore advertising because advertisers use many underhand methods. So he is talking about using underhand methods to get the message across. Now you have to say how. Posters have attention grabbing words or provocative pictures. Furthermore, so this was the example. Furthermore, some advertisements today are even hidden in what seem like pieces of art or public information, right? As a consequence, then what is the result of it? People don't realize they are being marketed to by targeting people's unconscious thoughts, adverts are a form of brainwashing that take away people's freedoms to make choices. So expansion on the result, right? So three points with examples. In the third point, maybe a very specific example is not given, but still examples of how posters grab attention is given. And the concluding consequence of it, right? So three points given, now what do we need? A conclusion. I am closing, or sorry, in closing, I firmly believe that, right? So it shows that this is your conclusion. The sole purpose of advertisements are to persuade us to buy things that we normally wouldn't. So this is what restatement of the introductory sentence. The products that are advertisers often don't live up to the standards that we have set for them because of false advertising. So this was your first point. In addition, ads created by big corporations are often exaggerated, making us buy things which are not necessary. Finally, because of many underhand methods, advertisers use uh, use an ads, we are taken uh, away of our freedom to make choices. So the three points that have been stated in the three paragraphs, you can summarize. If you can't get it down to two to three words, 
then maybe if you have time enough, use one single sentence for each. This is that's what this student has done. One single sentence for each point. Yeah. And here also it should be clear that this was your first point. When you use in addition, the it is clear that this is your second point. And finally, third point. And preferably it should be in the order that your points have appeared in your essay, right? So this is an example of how you can use your templates, how to structure your essay, your uh, reason, topic sentence, reason with examples, concluding sentence. That's what is required, right? Everyone clear on this? Hmm? Ayan? Yes, ma'am. Tanush? Yes, ma'am. Simar? So you think you can yes. uh, you can handle a topic? Hmm? So this essay was 386 words. So if you see, it has been expanded enough. So beyond three, 300 words, you if you don't want to put in three points, your essay would be around 350 words, which is absolutely fine. You can write two points if you can't expand too much on it. Okay, let's look at this topic. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Always telling the truth is the most important consideration in any relationship. Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. Now, this is a little difficult to think about. First thing comes to my to your mind is we should speak the truth. Right? Now you can either agree or disagree. It is absolutely okay because there is no right or wrong answer. Right? Now, one more thing. When you are talking about agree or disagree questions, now here it is telling the truth is most important consideration in any relationship. Now it could be any relationship. Now relationship does not restrict you to relationship between two people. It could be relationship in an organization, relationship between say staff members in the organization or any other thing that comes to your mind, right? Now, what is important is that we need to get our points on whether you agree or disagree. Now, in some topics, it may happen that you have such a topic and you, you think that you should agree with it, but you don't have enough points to write. So the first thing you can do is when you are brainstorming, you put in agree and disagree. Now, telling the truth, you just write down every all points that quickly write down a few points that come to your mind relating to agree. So, point example, point number one example, point number two example, maybe. So, examples also should be there. And then for disagree, are you getting uh, enough points? One point, two point, maybe you got three points for disagree or three examples. Uh, maybe you didn't get your points, but you just did get your examples and you could ex uh, expand on the examples to explain your points. So what would you do? Which you would first see which one makes a stronger essay. Maybe disagreeing on this point makes a stronger essay. Right? You have more to say about it. Or according to you, agreeing makes a stronger essay because you have more to write about it. So you don't just go by this is correct or not. Go by how much can you write and how strong your points are. Okay. So everyone can uh, just about put in three minutes to think about this point, this topic. So, so this is how you can plan it out. Yeah. Choose the position, first decide. Now you, you have to first think. Now you, you, what is the question asking you? Agree or disagree? What is your opinion on this? 
whether you should agree or disagree or not. Uh, we are not in this. We are not talking about advantages or disadvantages. Now, two strong arguments should be there. Two or uh, two strong reasons. Do you have them? Right. And yeah, you don't need really three. And personal example relating to the two reasons, do you have them? This is what you have to see. So mainly you just do, uh, so what is the main point? Telling the truth in personal relationships, right? Just write down a, the key words of the question. Reason number one, example, do you have it? So first thing you did was whether you want to agree or disagree. Example, so you just write down examples, reason. Maybe you don't have a reason, but you think of, of an example. Write down the keywords of your example. First example, second example, what is the reason that you can get to from that example? Right? So you, everyone got your points down or the format of thinking. Now I'll get back to the question so that you have your question in front of you. So think about two points on either either side of it. You can take a little beyond three minutes maybe because this is the first one you are doing, but don't be too long. Yes. Let me know whoever is ready with your points. Now, once you are ready with your points, what do you do? Think of how to begin. What will you write in your introduction? Just write an outline or at least um, write how would you begin with your outline. Okay, everyone ready with your points at least? Hmm? Okay, Manya, just give me your rough points. What is the first thing you wrote? Okay, first, uh, did you, have you fixed a stance? Agree or disagree? 
Uh, ma'am, I have a few points I could try. Okay. Have you? What have you written down? So planning should always be on paper, not just in your mind, right? So what are the points you have? Just just the points. I'm not asking you for a framework. Yes, Ma'am, I have agreed with the statement mm -hmm. um, that uh, that uh, uh, telling the truth, uh, you, you would be a trustworthy friend or... Mm -hmm. uh, okay. and One is, first point is trustworthy. Yes, right? ma'am. Do you have an example for it? Um, ma'am, it could be for, uh, um, so when you think of an, of, of a reason, uh, you should think of an example. Yes, ma'am. To maybe keep something a secret or, uh, hmm. so think of a personal example, right? So you note down a personal example. So what is your second point? Have you thought of a second point? Uh, Ma'am, second point uh, hmm? would be that you would have a person that would be reliable to talk to them freely or something like that. Now, being trustworthy and being reliable. Yes, ma'am, it's a bit same. It's the same thing. Yes, ma'am. Right? So you could think of another point. Okay, let's see. Yaksh. Yaksh, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Yaksh, are you can you hear me? Oh, you are gone. Okay. Okay, Simmer. What is, what is your stance on this topic? Um, I also agree with it. Okay. Reason number one? Uh, my first reason was also that truth could lead to trust between the people. Hmm. And example? An example? An example would be like, I, I have many friends, but there are only a few people with, with whom I am fully... Uh, I do not lie to, and they mm -hmm. are trustworthy and reliable friends that I could talk to in any situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, and the other point being that uh, lying or not uh, being truthful could uh, hurt or break the, your relationships or uh, if you're in a, a big group and uh, uh, like lying in that situation might cause trouble to many people. Okay. So do you think you are you will be able to expand on these points properly? The second point, uh, maybe more, I could expand more on the second point, but the mm -hmm. first point is not uh, that. So in the first point, uh, you have to think of a specific personal example and the result of that uh, incident, right? So that is how you can expand. So a specific example, what happened because of that? Did you lose your friend? And so you think that speaking the uh, truth always uh, is required to gain the trust of your friends. Right? Otherwise, you end up losing friends. And the second one, you can expand with, say, uh, gaining trust in a group activity. Maybe uh, an, uh, they also a specific example to show how a particular, maybe maybe something like not ha it didn't happen to you, but it happened to somebody else, and everyone lost trust on that person or did not give work to that person. Something of that sort can come up. Okay, so coming to Ayan. 
I don't seem to be quite confident about his points. Uh, ma'am, I I think I can write on this, but uh-huh. they. Ah, uh, so I agree with the statement, and the first okay. point I've written is, uh, uh, when trust, uh, when a relationship, a uh, relationship is built on trust, when it's broken, uh, it's hard to start again. Uh, mm-hmm. and uh, being truthful allows to build trust, respect, and healthy com- communication. This is the first point, and then I can elaborate on it. Okay. And the second point I've written is a person who lies will always be expected to lie again. and it hmm. builds a reputation of being a liar and no one would uh, like to relate to them or talk to them okay so, so you, you you have an example to that uh for the second one i can uh, write because like i had a friend who used to lie a lot and hmm. the soon a uh, rumor started to spread around that she like she lies a lot and then the, no one started talking to her, uh, no one so everyone stopped talking to her like, okay so you have two clear points Okay, let's see who else is there ready. Yaksh. Yes. Okay. Can you give me uh, your introductory sentence? I'm not asking you about your points right now. I just want how would you frame your introductory sentence? i would start by i agree with that truth is the most important consideration would, would your opinion be the first statement first sentence means first will be like mostly people would not uh, people would disagree that truth is not the most important consideration something like mm-hmm. that and okay. then well, now when we were discussing what did we say about the first sentence a general statement restating the question yeah so both sides of the uh, say agree or uh, so all always telling the truth is the most important consideration in relationship some people agree to this while some people will disagree now you have to rephrase the question so how will you rephrase the question i just read it out how will you paraphrase so paraphrasing is very important how do you paraphrase you pick up the main the key words put them in your own sentence right so or if you can't put may uh, you can't actually create a new sentence you could at least uh, use the last part of the sentence given to you as the beginning and the rest of it follows after that So yes, Yaksh, can you try rephrasing the sentence to get your first sentence? Ma'am, can we directly write the statement? Truth is the most important consideration in any relationship. Mostly mm-hmm. people agree with this, disagree with this statement. But my opinion, like then, you can, but it would be good to rephrase the given statement. and then go on to your opinion so keep a generalized statement some people think that telling the truth that um, in any relationship telling the truth is crucial yeah or is very important while some would not agree to this and then go on to according to me or in my opinion so your opinion should always be a second sentence and then you go on to say for how and i i shall be discussing this or explaining this with two reasons okay so yaksh what was your first reason mom mostly i've written general statements like hmm. truth is important in any relationship because uh it kept it keeps trust between hmm. so you also have trust so trust is your first point second point ma i read about about friendship friendship okay so trust and friendship will not go together in your first statement then yeah you can say trust is important for friendship when you're talking about friendship you should have a different point to expand on it or different reason to expand on it. 
right? So everyone, I think, uh, mostly have has the same similar types of points. So this is what you are going to write. You can expand on it. Now, if I come down to the other questions, I'll just go through the questions that you may get. So this is one about advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of living in a large city versus living in a small town. Use specific reasons and examples. I think this was a question which we discussed in the uh, speaking, independent speaking also. So when you talk about advantages and disadvantages, what, you begin with a general statement in your introduction, right? Don't just say large city versus small uh, town and you can use, what other words can you use instead of advantages and disadvantages? Varshini? Pros and cons. Yes, you can use pros and cons. Um, and then, now here what you are going to do is when you're talking about advantages and disadvantages, your, in your body, you, you can begin with, there are various pros and cons of living in a large city versus a small uh, town. And I will be discussing both disadvantages and disadvantages. And even if they haven't stated clear, uh, like um, whether your opinion is required or not, you can express your opinion that I would prefer living in, say, a large city or living in a small town, whichever is your preference. And then you will go on to explain paragraph one will be your body paragraph one. That is your first point will be your advantages. Second point will be disadvantages. Conclusion will include advantages and disadvantages. Say uh, there are both advantages and disadvantages. Uh, like just restate the two points that you have taken up and conclude with your opinion again, right? And when you're talking about advantages and disadvantages, say uh, you think the disadvantages are more. So you stress on the fact that they are, like you begin with the advantages and then, however, there are more disadvantages to this, right? If you think that is what you are stressing on. If you think you are uh, you are stressing on the advantages, write on it, explain it, and then you go on. However, there are some disadvantages. So to, just to show that you think advantages are more. Okay? So everyone will be able to write this. Now, in your... So this we already discussed how to go about it, how to, yeah. So this is important. Your opinion should be clear where your opinion is asked for. If you are asked for your preference, then there should be a clear preference and last three minutes to edit, right? So again, going back to uh, this, this is what you can refer to if you are a little confused. Re, uh, one sentence in your body, first sentence in your body paragraph, reason for your opinion, explain the reason, example, concluding sentence to connect back. Right? Now, this is another sample essay which you can read how it is written. So, this is for you people to go through and figure out how specific examples can be used. Now coming to a few questions, now I've put a few questions here and you have about uh, 50 odd questions at the end of your study material. Yeah, so maybe the last few pages of your study material would have 50 odd questions. You can pick up any. Now your questions here could be about anything. They could be about general topics. It could be about uh, education, governance, any public facilities, uh, something to do with student life, something to do with campus life. You All you have to do is uh, express your, take your stance, give your points, 
give your reasons and examples. So this one says some charitable organizations allow people to give money to charity to choose how their donation will be used. Right? If you were to give money to charity, would you prefer to choose how your donation is going to be used? Or do you think it is more effective to leave that decision to the organization? Right? So some charitable organizations allow people to give more money to charity and choose how their donation is used. So this is more or less a, com a combination of agree, disagree, and prefer. Right? So when you are stating your opinion, you could say that I don't, uh, maybe I don't agree that uh, people should be allowed to choose. Or if you think the other way, I think the people should be allowed to choose because maybe your reasons are uh, that way. Um, and, and then you could go on to personally, I would prefer to choose how donation is going to be used or I would not prefer to choose and leave it to the organization. So you would use the question to frame your introduction and then two reasons. Now, if you look at this, many students starting university must, must choose a major and parents of these students often give them advice about which major to choose. This is a common problem many of us face. Some parents tell the children to choose the major that most interests the students. Other parents tell students. So there are two, two sides of the question. Some people um, um, tell the students what they should choose. A major that will lead to a job with high salary. Now here you can use these to elaborate in your essay. Even if the major may not be one that most interests the students, which approach do you believe is better and why? So here, any one of the approaches, use your personal examples, right? So similarly, you have about a few more questions here. You can go through them, pick up any one of them, use your essay structure, write on them. Don't, and one more thing, when you are picking a question, remember you will have, you don't have any choice in your exam. So just pick up a question, attempt it. Doesn't matter if you, if you don't have any idea, most of the time you will not have any idea what to write. You have to be able to write. So practice by just picking up a, a random question. Maybe you just think in your mind, okay, I'll write uh, on question number six. So just go to question number six, whatever it is, write on it, right? So any doubts on this so far? Hmm? You think you will be able to write properly? Hmm? Simar? Yaksh, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Yaksh, confident yes. enough. So now presently, maybe you think that I have my points, but I don't know how to expand. You will be able to expand only when you start writing. So practicing is important. So write at least. Uh, now, if uh, how many of you have already registered for TOEFL? Anyone um, who I has have registered? registered? Yes, Akshita. Varshini? You have? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Manya? Uh, no, ma'am. Not as yet? Okay, no. so everyone will register as soon as possible. Get your date, and your date should be before 15th July. Oh, uh, ma'am? Yes, sir, Yaksh? And the registration fee, is it only valid for uh, one attempt? Yes, one attempt. So, ma'am, if you miss the date, uh, if you miss the date because of your uh, personal reason, because of your fault, then it is not refunded. If in case the center you have been allotted gets cancelled and the, or the date is rescheduled, then you don't have to pay again. And ma'am, if you have already paid and then we want a refund to change the date, 
or something uh, to change the date you have to pay a certain amount okay ma'am so if you are changing that because they have the uh, date ready they have the exam ready for you so they are not going to refund if you are going to cancel your date so ma'am if we uh, decide not to give to full after registration they won't hmm. refund no they won't refund so if you register you must make up your mind that you are going to attempt right so any and uh, this is specifically for all those who are applying this year take your toefl before the 15th why because after the 15th there will be some changes in the pattern not after the 15th exactly from uh, i would say all exams after from 26th july onwards so that means you have to prepare uh, for a different independent so the independent writing task will not be there there will be a different writing task too rest of it will remain speaking will not change uh, reading and listening question types will remain the same maybe there will be a shorter test but uh, you will be uh, preparing for a different question for the speaking uh, for the writing task too that's all that will change so and anyway uh, for those who are applying this year get done with your toefl because you have a lot of work to do right so anyone who is not applying this year who is not applying this year ayan you are not applying okay so you have the uh, privilege of taking your toefl later anybody else not applying this year no so all of you should take your toefl before the 15th so that you get done with it get your scores and don't have to be bothered about toefl again unless your scores are very low which i don't expect i'm sure everyone will get a good score right and now you have to practice and anyone who uh, wants um, okay when you are registering for toefl you will be getting uh, mock tests they'll be giving you one free mock test one um, i think uh, some slight amount you have to pay for it uh, so when you, you can take those and ets will be evaluating those for you you will get exactly the scores that ets would be giving you right and apart from that if anyone cannot take those tests then you can request for mock test with uh, ut uh, but you have to inform from beforehand so that uh, the test slots can be arranged for you okay got it and yes. if you have any doubts uh, maybe after a few practices i will share more material practice material with you but only way to get good scores is practice so don't be lax on that i know you have a lot of things to do and this is important so i, I believe all of you are done with your sat not going in for another attempt simmer are you done with your sat yes ma'am i gave it uh, just this time okay so your scores are still yet to come yes ma'am this friday okay yeah it All was my second attempt i already have one score so what's your first score my first score was 1390 1390 so that was the new sat or the old one no ma'am the old one i gave old it in december okay. so i think you will get a better score for the new one okay so if uh, now after you have practiced if you think that you need a doubt session then you have to request a doubt session with either your branch coordinator or with surjit ma'am and then we will um, accordingly uh, arrange for a doubt session okay so doubt sessions can be a normal session or one to one depending upon how many students there are right so so far in all the sections anyone with any doubts and please practice send me your 
um, recordings of the speaking task and you can mail me or you can just attach a word file to whatsapp and send it to me okay right okay so that's it for today then all the best hmm? thank you ma'am welcome thank you ma'am so like everyone okay ma'am should i leave okay, ma'am yes uh, ma'am ma yeah and don't practice don't practice in a silent atmosphere okay. it's going to be noisy okay so right? it's not like sad uh, no it's not like sad it's a computer based test and there is a speaking section also every each person maybe uh, batches will be coming in and leaving so it will uh, if maybe the while you are doing your reading section the person next to you is doing his speaking section okay so there will be disturbance so let there be noise around you when you are practicing okay so this is one important thing i forgot to mention so maybe i'll put it down in the group also yeah okay. so don't say that i want to close the door and practice yes ma'am let people be there around you talking the tv on you have to be with all the commotion around you you should be able to focus ma'am but with all the commotion on uh, when i speak during my speaking skills will mm -hmm. the audio be recorded properly yeah that will be because the, the mic will be close enough so and you'll have your headphones on but it's not noise cancellation headphones okay. so don't expect uh, now you will be able to hear clearly whatever is being played uh, on your system mm -hmm. and the next person won't be very close to you but close enough that you can uh, get the sound yeah. right okay thank you ma'am okay then welcome bye bye ma'am